creepy and cool TikToks that will blow your mind. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research, as these clips haven't been fact-checked. Isn't it weird how so many versions of you exist in people's minds? Some know you as the shy person who doesn't talk. Some see you as the annoying person who won't shut up. Mm. Some see you as cold and mean, and others find you caring and kind. The gist is that the person you think of as yourself exists only for you. Every person you meet, have a relationship with, or make eye contact with on the street creates a version of you. And there are a thousand different versions of yourself out there in people's minds. This is how people think of you doesn't mean anything. Teeth don't lie. Elvis's personal dentist, Dr. Henry Weiss, confirms that Bob Joyce was the king. Elvis's dental crowns and casts of his teeth are a compelling piece of evidence in the mystery surrounding his identity. The porcelain crowns were carefully crafted by Dr. Henry Weiss to fill in the gaps between Elvis's front teeth. Of note is Bob Joyce, a figure speculated to have a striking resemblance to Elvis. The confluence no. of evidence is compelling dental evidence, while doubts about Elvis's dental history remain. Here is a rare photo released by the Henry Weiss family showing Elvis original teeth with a noticeable gap between the front teeth. Interestingly, this matches the dental anatomy of Bob Joyce, showing a striking resemblance in the position, shape, and number of teeth. The assumption is that this is the case. Elvis may have faked his death after his dentures were removed in order to restore his natural teeth. Both Elvis and Bob have the same hand shape, bone structure, size, and gestures. Anatomy experts have confirmed that Elvis and Bob have the same facial structure and ear shape. The accumulation of these clues suggests a tantalizing hypothesis. Elvis Presley and Bob Joyce are the same person. So the video- How about the age difference? He would be 89 today. The video that you're about to watch is of a Russian soldier that's taking cover and hiding in a small area while there's FPV drones flying around above, and you can hear them in the video. He's got this device that's beeping consistently, which is likely just a detection system of some kind. They look somewhat like this. There's, there's tons of different variations, I'm sure. This particular one, I think, can detect them out to two kilometers. I'm sure that there's all varying detection methods and distances. But anyway, let's check this out. Ooh. By the sound of the blast in the background towards the end of the video, it sounds like it hit somebody or something. What a terrifying thing to experience. FPP drones is really changing the war. Seeing this gave me goosebumps. I trust this 1,000 times more than, you know, anyone sitting in the U.S. government. I hope they can do something good about it. Followers, somebody please tell me. Please tell me this isn't freaking true. Please tell me that I'm watching fake news with what I am seeing in Aurora, Colorado. Please tell me that it is not really happening to where Venezuelan gangs are showing up at a place where Americans live on American soil telling Americans to get the hell out and Americans are getting the hell out without a freaking shot fired. Please tell me that Americans are not really surrendering their living quarters to freaking Venezuelan gangs. Am I watching fake news? Please tell me I am. I'm afraid it's not a fake news, buddy. Anyone from Aurora can give us an update in the comment section. I truly appreciate it. The apartment complex that got took over by the Venezuelan gang in Aurora, Colorado. Look at that. 
Something very disturbing is happening in South Korea right now that not a lot of people know about. Now, I have to be really careful about the words I say or visuals I show or this will get taken down. But shockingly, there is a deep fake crisis gripping South Korea right now and the scale of this is mind-blowing. Extremely inappropriate AI deep fakes of real women are being mass produced and distributed on chat rooms like Telegram. And a major concern is that it's not just celebrities, it's of ordinary women like family members mothers, sisters, teachers, female military officers, and even students at all level of schooling, including elementary, high school, and university. No woman is safe from this in South Korea right now. Individuals are even scraping social media platforms like Instagram, saving pictures of women, which are then used in these criminal acts. And just to give you an idea of the scope of this, every red dot you see on this map is a school that has been affected by this crisis. Reports say that in one group, which has a staggering 227,000 users, as soon as you enter, a message pops up saying, send me a photo of a woman you like right now. Upon entering an image, an illegal deep fake version of that person is created within five seconds. And remember, there is over 220,000 people in that chat. That is a staggering 5.2% of the entire male population aged 15 to 29. And from all of the messages I'm receiving from people in South Korea right now. They say that this topic is being severely underreported. Authorities have now confirmed the existence of these group chats and a large scale investigation is currently being launched. It's getting out of control, folks. You want to know something interesting about those gangs in El Salvador? To join a gang in El Salvador, the first requirement they ask you to do to show your loyalty is killed one of, kill one of your loved ones. What? So young kids, maybe 13, they, they the gangs hang around their schools and start recruiting kids that look like you know, big or whatever, or kids that look like their parents aren't around them too much, they, they, they go up to them, they're like, hey, you need to join our gang, you have a week to think about it. If not, we're gonna kill you, you know? And then uh, kids that do choose to join, I mean, it's not really a choice, it's either you die or like you join the gang, you know? They, they make you show your loyalty, that if you have a brother, they're like, kill your brother to show your loyalty to the gang to us. Kill so you. that's how messed up the people that are in the gangs over there are. You know, it's not like here in America where, like, you could just start claiming stuff, you know? Over there, like, you gotta, like, shit, you gotta, like, kill a family member, like a mom or a dad Dude. or a brother to join the gang, you know? Not anymore, though. Bukele, the best president in the world, made all gangs disappear. We all ain't know what happened to Macklemore? Y'all remember Macklemore, right? Y'all remember the thrift shop guy? I don't wanna pop some time. Anyway, see, Macklemore had a problem. Like Drake, his career got ruined. But it was who ruined his career that's the interesting part because like drake again the same person ruined their career pay attention it all started in 2013 when macklemore and his boy ryan lewis took over 2013 with their rap album the heist but i need you to listen to me they took over the pop space with rap music not the rap space with rap music, you get me? And in general, this is a big thing for white rappers, yes, including Eminem, who became a global sensation because, well, he was a pop star who rapped. Now, there was someone else taking over the rap space around this time. It was a kid from Compton named Kendrick Lamar. He was taking the rap world by storm. People were already considering his album, Good Kid, Mad City, one of the greatest albums of all time, but it wasn't only him. Drake dropped a project called Nothing Was The Same. Yeezus drops by Kanye. Jay-Z drops Magna Carta Holy Grail. In fact, all of these albums get nominated for a Grammy. Now, this picture is very telling. Have you noticed something? Black and white, black and white, black and white, not black and white. The culture was having a black and white phase. Macklemore didn't really know the culture and that's okay. But here's where it became kind of an issue. He wins the album for best rap song and that's already more than Tupac and Biggie. He then wins for best new artist. He wins for best rap performance and best rap album. Black people were like, can I see that list again? He said, that's what I thought I saw. Grammys, are you stupid? Grammy said, Macklemore was all over the radio. He was rapping and snapping, my homie. <laughs> Did you hear the TikToker? He was all over the pop radio. Grammys were like, man, y'all ain't mad for real. Black people were like, all right, no more Grammys for us. So people around the world started saying, what made them Africans so mad? So people started to listen to Kendrick Lamar more, which became a huge problem for the Grammys because that boy could rap and make hits. The Grammys was like, oh, snap. Macklemore said, they said, Macklemore, he said, huh? They said, come outside. He said, y'all mad at me? They said, no, we not come outside. He said, no, because y'all Africans be jumping, but check this out. 
I said, sorry to Kendrick. Y'all don't believe me? Look at the text I just posted on Twitter. I said, I robbed you. And then I said, I wanted to apologize, but the music was playing. And I was like, oh man, I can't say Kendrick had a good album. So I said, thanks for the Grammys. And I walked out. It's like Lindsay Lohan when she broke the crown on Mean Girls. So they asked Kendrick Lamar about the apology on an interview. And Kendrick Lamar says, honestly, I thought it was a little weird just because he posted it for the world to see. But other than that, I know Macklemore is a good dude. Shout out to Macklemore. Now, here's the thing. People didn't really hate Macklemore, but he kept apologizing. He makes another album. He has a song called White Privilege in it. Everybody like, damn, bro. He going on interviews saying, I've been trying to fight this for years and they give me the award, a white man. Like, okay, Mac, okay, word. And as you probably know, apologizing and then showing the whole world you apologize doesn't really sit right with people. It doesn't make the apology not true, but you know. This coupled with the fact that he split up with his producer and apparently the songs wasn't hitting the same. All that being said, he does still have a fan base today. But where he was at with his stardom to where he is at now to some people might be considered ruined. But now you know who's to blame for his downfall. Yes, like Drake, it was himself. He did it himself. Drake is still the most stream uh, rapper of August, that's just wild. It proves people just don't care. What's going on in Aurora, Colorado should be one of the biggest news stories in this country right now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a Venezuelan gang of migrants has taken over an apartment complex in Aurora and is forcing the tenants to pay them rent. They're of course heavily armed um, and the landlord has no outlet for assistance. These people are essentially trapped, being held hostage in their own homes by this gang of migrants. It said they're going block by block, apartment complex by apartment complex to establish themselves in that area. They're also looting places like Target and stores and things like that. Look up these videos, it's absolutely insane. Aurora PD, FBI, DEA, what are they doing? Nothing, there's nothing they can do about it. I'm sorry, is this the American dream or is this the Venezuelan dream? And guys, this isn't on the border. This is happening in Colorado. This is the Midwest. Go to the comments. Let me know if you've heard of this, if you live in this area. What is going on? And is anyone doing anything to stop it? Third world. You did it, Joe. This is absurd. Do not do the viral chase money glitch. You are literally being trolled into going to jail. Is it last night a bunch of videos went viral about a chase bank system glitch, allowing people to withdraw massive sums of money which they didn't have from their accounts. The claim went that if you deposited a fake check into your account, the glitch would allow you to withdraw money before the checks are verified. Only problem is... That's not a glitch. That is one of the oldest and most common forms of financial fraud. But because these videos got tens of millions of views and people under 25 literally don't use, therefore understand checks really, a bunch of people who saw these videos on X and TikTok actually tried it. Videos of people lining outside Chase this morning only made the frenzy grow and is now causing people to commit actual fraud. And the problem is, even if there is some sort of glitch that allows you to withdraw money you don't have, it's still illegal. They have all of your information and they'll just charge it right yeah. back to you once they find out. Just like this guy is now learning after falling for all of these posts. Oh man, they really told me to tap in. Next day I was supposed to clear and look at my account, yo. Bro, what the? the this is crazy. It's going to ruin their future with bad credit. Ongoing case of the Kolkata doctor incident. August 8th, 2024. Dr. D is a 31 year old second year postgraduate and she's working at the RG Car Hospital. She's about to work a 36 hour shift. That particular night, she's got dinner with her junior doctors at around 2 in the morning. And around 3 a.m., she decides she's going to find a quiet spot to rest, considering she's been on call for most of the 36 hours. It's almost the end of her shift. One of the people that she ate dinner with told her, hey, why don't you go rest? in the lecture hall on the third floor. We're gonna make sure that nobody comes in and bothers you because, you know, that's a big thing. So don't worry about it. We'll like keep guard. She ends up sleeping up there and while she's deep in sleep, someone or a whole group of people crack open the door, slip inside. And by the time they come out, she is covered in blood with injuries all over her body. Dr. D is laying there dead. She had been essayed and killed, but why? The next morning, students find Dr. D's body. They find the crime scene. I mean, the whole room, there's blood on the floor. There's blood seeping out of her body. She had blood coming out of her eyes, mouth, her uh. private parts. She had bite marks. Someone had been biting her all over her face. Deep scratch marks on her skin as well as her face. The autopsy shows injuries, indicating that her mouth and nose had been clamped shut and slammed up against likely the wall. She has injuries on her stomach, left leg, all the way down to her fingers, even her lips. I mean, quite literally, every 
every part of this doctor was brutally assaulted and injured. It's reported that her heel, her collarbone, her pelvic bone was either fractured or completely broken. Her legs were bent and contorted at an almost impossible angle. Somebody had struck her private parts with hair clips. Many reports state that the injuries with the hair clip were so bad that it would be on par with, quote, genital mutilation. Her body was covered in blood. Her cause of death was smothering and throttling, Oof. indicating that she was likely strangled to death and then smothered. Who did this to her? Why would they do this to her? Why would the hospital tell her parents that she self-exited? This is very evil. Cities of justice are being replaced by AI in a pilot scheme in one London school. A class of 20 GCSE students at David Game College will try out the new technology this year. It means lessons will be led by bots instead of staff, which some groups say is concerning. However, the college says the trial will be closely monitored. So I think Any news when politicians will be replaced by AI? I think this is a stark reminder of the fact that this kind of thing, like war, affects everybody. Hundreds of thousands and millions of civilians. And like, like this is someone's grandma. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it doesn't matter if they're oh Ukrainian or goodness. Russian. Like, it's still someone's grandma. Yeah, you know? Shit. And so many people get totally uprooted, their whole lives uprooted. They lose their homes. They lose their livelihood. They lose their, their stable food uh, intake. They lose their clean water intake. And they go to the wind. So this is like a good reminder that, hey, you should not want war. You should probably want peace because that's how you have the most prosperity for your people. Like, I get it. We should be ready if we absolutely have to, but we should, this should be something that's avoided unless no other choice is given. I don't think anyone wants war. It's only the leaders. The Hells Angels are on their way to Aurora, Colorado to combat the Venezuelan gangs that have taken over the apartment complexes over there. Could you not? You can go look this stuff up. You can go look this stuff up. So about time, because if you don't know, the police over there and the homelands over there and the local authorities over there have said there's nothing they can do to those Venezuelan gangs because it's squatter laws and all this other type of stuff. And I'm like, do y'all know these, these Venezuelan gangs are teaming up with MS-13? Do, you, do anybody know that? That's that's what they're really doing. They're teaming up with MS-13. If you don't know what MS-13 is, that's one of the deadliest gangs in America. So not only are they coming over here illegally, they're teaming up with the deadliest gangs to do, I guess, more deadlier things. I mean, make it make sense. But yeah, the Hells Angels are on their way over there, man. So that's always good, man. Because what's better than if, 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 if the uh, local authorities won't do it, then just the citizens of that area should do it. You know what I mean? Like, we're not about to sit here and allow y'all to to uh just terrorize the city nobody's doing that i never thought i'd say thank god for the hell's angels did you know there is a way to find your hidden genius actually you may not know that you're a genius at something maybe some things no it's not just iq it's lots of other stuff so to find your genius you need to define what genius is I like this definition. So, Little Man Tate. The movie came out forever ago. I watched it once, but I remember this one line. and It was the way they define genius. And a genius is someone who knows without learning. Who knows without learning. When you look at your life, the things that you know without learning are a hint. If they come easy to you, that's a hint. The nature of knowing without learning or things coming easy tricks you because then you minimize it don't think it's special and then get mad at people that they can't do it too and it could be as simple as seeing spatial relationships or uh, uh, being able to construct things or understand mechanical things or, or or maybe it's with written words or maybe it's a turn of phrase or maybe it's just being incredibly encouraging when you show up around people whatever that thing is or those things that you know without learning and they come easy to you and that you're tempted to minimize or judge others, others about, that's where you want to start looking. And once you know it, you need to show up with it everywhere you go. Hope this helps. I'm Dr. Fred. I help people make sense of things like this concerning purpose and uh, unity and direction. I love problems because I love to hear them go away. Oh, right. I like that.
My IQ is 149. They say I'm borderline genius. But I say a genius is someone who can pull information out of other dimensions and bring it into this realm as knowledge, talent, art, etc. Humanoid robots in your house is no longer a thing of the future because One X have just shocked the world by releasing the first look at Neo. Neo is designed from the ground up to be a consumer robot. In other words, uh, your ethical slave. Yeah, anything you want it to do around the house, chore wise, it'll do. Unload the dishwasher, make the bed, hang up the laundry, kiss you goodnight, oil you up. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And to make Neo less intimidating and dangerous, it stands at a short king five foot four and a skinny king at 25 kg. And if you're wondering why bro's looking like a roadman in a tech fleece, well, this outfit is actually to protect you from pinching or crushing your finger, you know, if you were to get physical. It can run at a speed of 7.5 miles per hour, carry a maximum of 20 kg, and has about a two to four hour runtime, depending on the activity. And I've heard this too many times. The reason it needs to be modeled after a human is because everything we've built in this world is designed for human form. More creepy, yeah, but easier. One X is now preparing pilot Neo robots for deployment in select homes later this year. So the question is, is this cool or creepy? Are we not going to learn from iRobot? The most valuable financial skill that anybody can have is not needing to impress other people. If you don't need to impress other people, that is an asset on your balance sheet that is worth a billion dollars because so much of society as a whole and the individual is just geared towards how can I get other people's attention? How can I show off to other people? How can, how can they like me more? You don't need to impress. You need to show that your business is going well so they can trust you. Ask an airlines pilot who almost crashed the plane on mushrooms speaks out. I um, <laughs> did something unfathomable to me, um, something I... <laughs> I have to take responsibility for and there was a feeling of being trapped like am i trapped in this she's this, this is she's not smiling. real go back I go back to... by the way by the way this is a pilot this is how sick a lot of them are not all of them look how sick this guy is i want you to watch the smile here on his face when he talks about his attempt to down a jetliner full of people feeling of being trapped like am i trapped in this in this airplane this is not real i mean stop I mean, it he's the joker is the joke this is who's in the air is the joker this is who's in the and the wife is so horrified she sleeps next to this guy at least one doctor saying at an ntsb summit in december it's time to modernize the mental health regulations for pilots who would you rather fly with a pilot who's depressed or a pilot who's depressed on medication and that's what it comes down to. I think if pilots and controllers. I mean, it's like, who would you rather fly with a schizophrenic or a schizophrenic who's had a good breakfast? <laughs> who would you? <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, the clouds must have looked so cool. For me and for most of my team, WhatsApp sucked most. We, we actually started you, as a. You say WhatsApp sucks. Absolutely. And I, I, can, I can elaborate on that. Please do. Sure. Uh, well, look, we're living in 2015. We're supposed to have flying cars and everything right now. Jetpacks. Absolutely. But if you have WhatsApp on your phone and your battery is low and, and your phone goes dead, suddenly you can't get access to your messages. It's over. It's not cross-device. It doesn't have cross-device sync. It's, you can't send documents or big media. Uh, there are lots of limitations with in, in uh, group chats, in, in, in your uh, communication, and it's, it's not private. So I, I'm not sure I was a big fan of WhatsApp about three or two years ago, and I'm not sure I am now. You said, you mentioned privacy. Now, you've made a big claim about Telegram being, um, having the ability to be end-to-end -end encrypted. And in Telegram, you can delete chat for both. It okay for you know how old is Zuck right now? Thirty nine? Has he at forty yet? Forty grand. Is he, how old is Zuck? Zuck over age? Years forty. Okay, he's forty years old. Does he have the right to change his mind and sincerely be wrong? Yes. Does he have the right to do that? Yes. Not only the right, yes, but the obligation, like all of us. Okay. But, everyone should. But the, but the point is, like, he can still change, right? He can still change yeah. and say, hey, I effed up. I effed up with my move on what I did. He can still do that. Correct. But we don't have the obligation to forgive him. 
That's, you, that was my point. I'm totally with you. So, okay, that's good. We don't have the obligation to forgive him, which is kind of the part about we can forgive, move on, don't forget. He's capable of doing it again. Maybe you don't trust him. His trust score is lower with us right now. Okay, no problem. Yes, everyone has that godly given right to change. Trust must be earned again. We all deserve forgiveness in order to be forgiven. Officers raid three different homes on the same block in Antioch, California. Inside, it's a massive marijuana farm. Oh. These are family homes worth nearly a million dollars. The interior, unrecognizable. This is from the nursery, is my guess, just based off of the way it's set up. Windows boarded up to control the light, a massive ventilation system running full blast. Intricate electrical setups to power lights and fans, a generator in the laundry room. Mold can be seen growing on walls and ceilings, runoff into makeshift drains, and room after room after room filled Ooh. with marijuana. I couldn't even tell this is a master bedroom. In California, all of this is just a misdemeanor. Authorities say many of these people have links to organize crime. We are starting to see as we unpack this more, more ties between a lot of these growing operations and Chinese organized crime. After they're busted, the houses are fixed up and put back well, on the market. You make the profit from what you grow in the house and then you make profit from selling the house. In Indonesia, you would get that penalty. Satanic Church founder Anton LaVey's terrifying last words on his deathbed will give you chills. Anton LaVey, author of the Satanic Bible and founder of the Satanic Church, was a very famous figure in occultism who pioneered Satanism to become a publicly accepted religion. However, his life came to a halt at age 67 when he took his last breath on the deathbed of St. Mary's Medical Center in San Francisco, California, where he seemingly had a vision of hell and uttered terrifying regretful words pertaining to his legacy. After astral projecting out of his body to possess his estranged Christian daughter, his silver cord was cut by a pastor who discipled his daughter, which ultimately led to his death. As he failed to project his soul back into his physical body, he started what? dying and was rushed to the hospital where he then uttered these words. What have I done? There's something very wrong here. This is all wrong. Those close to LeVay who had eventually left Satanism claimed that he had seen a vision of the eternal realm of hell and realized the true horrors of being separated from God only when it was too late to repent. Isaiah 48:22 says, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Your soul is valuable and every second you are close to eternity. So take advantage of the time that you have to follow Christ and seek the kingdom yeah. of heaven while you still have breath. If he's truly repented before he's dead, he is safe. No one's gonna mention Jesus is kinda gay. He's hanging out with 12 men and a hooker in zero BC and not her. That's it, I'm calling the cops. So I go into the bedroom, I shut the door, and I push a dresser in front of it. Then there's people calling my phone, and it turns out it's the cops. You gotta come out. I'm solidly drunk, and I'm like, not coming out. The person on the line finally said something snarky. You have to come in and get me, and hung up the phone. And I was like, well, before I let that help, and I'll take matters in my own hands. I had a box of straight razors. I took a fresh one out of the pack. I slashed one wrist. You know, it's bleeding down my arm, and I'm looking at it. And I remember the voice saying, you know, that's not enough. That's not going to get it done. Bam. Immediate, most instantaneous moment of regret. Took one look again. I was like, oh no. Now there's officers on the other side. All right, you got to come out. I'm, I'm coming out, but I'm bleeding. Please help me. And I'm on the way to the hospital. And by the time I get there, I've lost so much blood that I'm actually, I'm circling the drain. Like I'm laying there, I'm staring up at the bright hospital lights. And I just remember crying out to Jesus in a way that I had not throughout my life. You know, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Like, please don't let me die like my children need me i want to live but i remember the lights as bright as they were got even brighter and i went from feeling cold from blood loss to just feeling completely enveloped and warm and hearing i'm here my son you drifted but i've never left you mm. everything's gonna be okay everything that i've been fighting my way through in this life everything that i've been hanging on to this this darkness this depression this heaviness this oppression literally almost like a physical weight that was on me was just not there anymore it was gone the mockery is crazy but even though people mock and make fun of jesus he never changes he still loves you now this has to be one of the scariest and creepiest road trips i have ever seen in my entire life and it was recorded by Alyssa vanilla on youtube you have a guy uh -huh. in the mountain up there that is watching you with 
binoculars. Now Alyssa's channel is focused on vlog type videos where she travels with her van all alone. And in one particular situation while van camping in the middle of Arizona, something really creepy happened. Check this out. Alyssa was recording b-roll footage for her YouTube video when all of a sudden this guy comes along and starts asking questions. Questions like, are you all alone and how long have you been van camping? These kind of questions are already a red flag. Then all of a sudden he starts saying that if she needs water or if she needs to take a shower, she can go over to his home. And this is when Alyssa knew that there was something wrong. There was uh, actually come in and use the shower a couple times a week. Mm. This guy then goes away, noticing that Alyssa is not comfortable with the conversation, but in about 15 to 20 minutes he comes back, but this time she's prepared for this type of situation, so she sets up her camera in the other direction and completely hidden from him, so take into consideration that he did not know that he was being recorded. Check this out. You have a guy uh -huh. in the mountain up there that is watching you with binoculars. It's you. Okay, well, that's <laughs> unnerving. Um, well, I guess I won't be staying. Well, it's not that you can't stay. Just, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. The side of the mountain is safe. Really? Yes. Well, me comes out here and offers water, but mm, I would stay away from at this point, he's trying to convince her to go over to the other side of the mountain, but Alyssa just wants to get the heck out of there as fast as possible, so she starts folding her laundry and breaks eye contact with him. Now, keep in mind, he doesn't know he's being recorded. Check this out. I mean, I did want to stay because it's nice out here and it's quiet, but if there's somebody watching me, then obviously I don't think I should stay out here at all. Well, that's so... fine. That's, that's your choice, too. Yeah. Well, at least I got to put my laundry away. <laughs> it's always easier to do housekeeping out in the open rather than in the city somewhere so just finishing up my laundry and then i'll probably have to leave but that's okay gee does it say anything Now this is the moment that Alyssa got the heck out of there safe and sound and I'm glad that she didn't become one of those found footage videos on the internet. However, after posting the video to YouTube, there were several people leaving comments stating that this guy was possibly lying and trying to lure her in into some sort of creepy situation. But I want to know your thoughts. Do you think he was just being friendly or was there something really wrong with this situation and would you have done something differently? There's that long silent stare was him debating whether to attack her or not. This other guy that um, has autism and he's gone viral in Instagram because he'll take photos of basketball players and NBA, thousands of them. He'll take a picture of like just them playing basketball, whatever, you know, motion or position or posture they're in, and then finds an exact replica in the Renaissance paintings. Whoa. What? And there's hundreds and thousands of these photos. He just, he is just such a, like, he has the mind that just can look at a picture and like, oh, that's that painting, that, that'll that look comparable. And it's the exact same pose, the exact same posture. And he just does them side by side on the carousel. On that's Instagram. dope. And it's wild, man. Like, it does, I don't understand how. Photographic memory is people, crazy. Dude, yeah, I mean, not even photographic, though. Like, it's just, it's photographic, but, like, on top of that, it's, like, the recall, yeah. the, the, the comparison, be able to see it, like, in basketball, but then something com completely different art. Dude, that that's was wild. That dude. was one of the one of the reels I was thinking about using. Have you seen like the levels of imagination that people have? Oh, yeah. like picturing a red apple yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think that's crazy that someone can't even picture anything but the word apple. Yeah. Yeah. Do you now that is genius. Hear about the Russian American prisoner exchange? There's a clip of the prisoners getting to Russia, and Vladimir Putin was at the bottom of the stairs. Like they were living in Slovenia, but they were spies saying that they're from Argentina. Oh. 
And so what they're called were Russian sleeper agents, meaning they move to an area and they live basically their whole lives. They have kids, kids grow up. The kids only knew how to speak Spanish. The kids did not know that their parents were spies or Russians until they landed in Russia. Wait, yeah. we're Russian? Yeah. <laughs> this whole time? How do you move on after that? How do you like live I, your life like that? You just rationalize it. You've already been set out on that path. And so if you don't continue to live in that path, it's at the detriment of yourself and your family. But that makes you think like how many sleeper agents are like in the U.S.? <laughs> yeah. Oh, A for kabillion. sure. Definitely. What? I have no connection to Russia. What are you talking about? Why are you looking at me like that? Hey, Josh is the one who refuses to do a DNA test. Exactly. That's only because he's afraid that's her, that's his cousin. Are you but afraid also- for real? It was horrible. This is the woman who lived in the House of Horrors with her three children before Zach Bagans bought it. Latoya Ammons fought back tears when she told us how they fled in terror after her daughter was raised right off her bed. She says the demon sounded like this. Ooh. We've waited five days. Months. It sounded like something dead. It's right out of the movie Poltergeist. He walked up the wall and did the backwards flip. How did everybody in the hospital react to your son walking up the wall? They took off and they ran. The uh, doctor from the psych ward said that's not that's that's not real. That's not human. No human can do that. Speaking of deep, mysterious voices, you in there? <laughs> While I'm involved in this conversation, the AMFM radio went to static and turned up very loud, and it said, you in there. All right, God. And the person on the phone say, what the hell was that? And I say, I don't know. What was your reaction? I was in shock. If you haven't seen The Daily Friends on Netflix, go watch it, it's good. Are living in fear because armed gangs, they're alleged gangs that you're looking at, are taking over apartment complexes. Earlier that morning, I had seen several individuals carrying um, assault, we- assault weapons down to the next floor of the building adjoining mine, um, and I reported it to the police. So all day we were nervous and on high alert anyway, um, because they told us that they really couldn't do anything unless something happened. It is not by any means an isolated occurrence, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I have months, almost a year and a half worth of footage from six separate cameras. I have a bullet <coughs> hole through my car. Oh it went gosh. in one side and went out the other, hit about five things on the way through. My husband also has bullet holes in his car. I called 911, no help comes for me. No help, we were on our own and we were left to die. I mean, can you imagine being that woman? That's, that's unreal. But help did come for that resident eventually. It was in the form of a city council member named Danielle Jarensky. She helped her move out of the apartment complex and. Jarensky has been sounding the alarm on these gangs, alleged to be migrants from Venezuela. But despite all the video evidence we have seen, Colorado Governor Jared Polis's office says it's a purported invasion that is, quote, largely a feature of Danielle Jarensky's imagination. And today he went a step further, telling the angle, quote, if Danielle Jarensky has evidence of illegal activity in Aurora that can assist the investigation, it might even be illegal for her to withhold it from the Aurora Police Department, and she should file a report immediately. Joining me now is Danielle Jarensky, Aurora City Council member. Danielle, I just want to put up those statements for our viewers. A governor's office calling you out by name twice, saying that you are imagining this. It seems like Governor Polis is more interested in going after you than the alleged Venezuelan gangs. Mm. That's right. I mean, that's what this has turned into is complete pol- uh, political football. Um, and now he is so focused on me, even though he heard for himself from Cindy Romero earlier. I know he heard what she had to say. So now Coloradans are speaking out about the terror, the fear that they lived in, their cars filled with bullet holes. And yet the governor is still only talking about me. I, I haven't heard from him or, or anybody what the plan is to address this transnational gang. Um, he now is fixated on, on, I guess, attacking the whistleblower. Yeah, it, it seems like it. In fact, you know, I just want to reiterate what he said, that if you have evidence of illegal activity in Aurora that can insist in the investigation, it might be illegal for you to withhold it. I mean, first, that sounds like a threat. And and second, are you withholding evidence? I mean, it seems like I'm looking at the evidence, this video. 
Yeah, so I, Kaylee, for a long time, I was the only one in the city of Aurora that was trying to sound the alarm on this um, publicly, at least. And Aurora police officers were coming to me constantly. And that's why I got so hooked on this and just would not let it go. And hence why we are where we are today. Um, but I am the only one that was talking about this. Um, I have said everything that I know. I have told anybody who will listen. And it's amazing that now the governor has an interest in, in wanting to hear what I have to say or urging me to file a police report. I have said it all. I have been saying it all. I don't know why it was getting downplayed um, or denied, but you know this video couldn't be released until I knew for sure that I had the Romeros moved out of this property safely. I am withholding nothing. I'm the only one who was talking about this. Yeah, sounds like what we call a straw man argument. Look over here so I can cover for Kamala Harris. Don't look at what's happening in front of your very eyes. Danielle, thank you very much for bringing us this important story. You know, this whole situation is baffling to me. What's in question? Gangs come in and take over and the governor doesn't believe it? I'm truly stunned. That looks beautiful, a little scary, and cool at the same time. Something happened here that will likely never be replicated for as long as the human species exists. This occurred during a baseball game, but even if you're not a sports fan, you will understand this, and you will understand why what happened is just wild. It was August of 1957, and at the plate was a Hall of Fame batter named Richie Ashburn. He swings at a pitch, he fouls it off and the pitch goes into the stands and hits a fan, injuring her. The fan was named Alice Roth and the ball hit her so hard Oof. that it broke her nose and they had to stop the game. Like just imagine the silence falls over the crowd, they stop play and paramedics had to get her out. She was there with her grandchildren and get her onto a stretcher and everyone's watching as they take her away from the stands. So they're hauling her away covering her bleeding nose, probably taking her into that tunnel right there. They resume play, and on the very next pitch, Richie Ashburn hits another foul ball that flies into the tunnel and hits that woman again, again what? while she's on the stretcher being taken out of the stadium. She recovered fully. The two no of them, way. the woman and Richie Ashburn, became friends after this. It was a hugely famous incident in something that I am confident will never, ever happen again. This is a shocking breaking story from South Africa. A farmer from Limpopo, as well as two of his employees, are in court facing charges of murdering two women and feeding their bodies to pigs. Allegedly, what happened was the two women entered the farm to collect food that was dumped there by a truck. The accused apparently opened fire at them, claiming they were trespassing. The two women were killed and their bodies were dumped in a pigsty. There was a survivor of this incident, the husband of one of the deceased women. He was also injured in the shooting, but managed to get away the court case is ongoing so sorry for the families they were trespassing but were harmless probably hungry and in need of food no there was bloods and crips in new york i thought it was only california so now this was a blood house okay they don't even say cell they say bell everything's with b yeah. there's no c's no nothing they, they, anything there's a c it's replaced it's with, with a, a b. b the bloods call each other yo what's popping homie yo what's popping homie and then the Crips say, what's cracking, cuz, right? I grew up with all Italian cuz. We called each other cuz. all the time. Yo, what's oh, up, cuz? We called right? each other cuz and cuz all the time. Yeah, yeah, yo, cuz, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So we said a couple of things. So I'm afraid, like, I'm afraid, but, you know, people know who I am. Yeah. And because of the nature of the case, you're, like, almost cool, but doesn't mean that one guy won't cut your whole face open to make a name for himself. Because then he's the guy that cut Bronx tail. You know what I mean? So this is a very violent place. And you know, like now I'm with, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm like I said, I'm 145 pounds. Yeah. So I'm not physically capable of doing much. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know how it runs. I don't know what's going on. I'm just thrown in this place. So we, I had a couple words and I said, yo, cuz. He said, 
Uh, and then there was these two, it's funny. These two Puerto Rican <laughs> bloods, right? They were called the Twin Beanos. They were both in the same house. <laughs> two twin brother bloods. Puerto Ricans in the blocks at the same time. And the kid gave me one of his thermals. He put it through the thing. Cause it was March. I didn't think it was going to be always freezing out. Yeah. He put it through the thing for me, the kid. If it wasn't for Mr. Twin, one of the Twin Beanos, I was in trouble. Trust yeah. me. His Bronx tale become reality. I love the movie. Must have watched at least 10 times. With investment of less than $500, you can acquire equipment to engrave various designs on leaves and potentially sell each piece for $15. My Ooh. client is interested in starting a print-on-demand business and plans to purchase 10 leaf laser engravers. This device can engrave on any photo on a leaf within just five wow. minutes. When paired with a 50 cents photo frame, these engraved leaves can be sold for wow, $15 each. In China, the most affordable laser engraver costs $450. Selling approximately 30 engraved leaves will cover the initial investments. Additionally, besides engraving leaves, this machine can also engrave wood, acrylic, and many other materials. So, what do you think about this business opportunity? This is an awesome idea. Yeah, what do you think? Do you remember recently when I made the video on my other account that's now banned that they had to pull his body out of a pool in Ibiza? They said that he went down to the bottom and hit his chest so hard that he ingested and breathed in all this water. Well, I have a blind item. A plus to the publicist of the former Disney actor. That was a world-class excuse that sounds believable, but in reality is almost impossible to actually occur. Go try it yourself. Then the actor shared a photo Sunday on his Instagram story showing himself shirtless lifting weights on a pink yoga ball. Happy and healthy. Thanks for all the well wishes, he wrote. Until now, that was the extent of the detail provided. But TMZ had gotten the scoop, reporting that the 36-year-old actor dove into a pool with friends in the wee hours of that Friday, hit the bottom with his chest, and ingested a large amount of water into his lungs. Now, if we know anything about Hollywood, how do they always go out? Water. Sounds like to me, people found him when they weren't supposed to. I came home that night, and the bathroom door was shut, and the light was on. I'm like, yo! No, no response. I had to go by the bathroom door to go to the front door. So as I go by the bathroom door, I'm like, yo! I go, hey! Boom, boom, boom. Nothing. He don't have a car, so I'm, I didn't know if he was like, home, not home, right? Watch. Jiggle the handle, it's locked. I'm like, F what's going on? Boom! I Busted open with my shoulder. His feet are by the door. His feet were up against the door, holding, kind of holding it shut. Mm -hmm. His head's between the tub and the toilet. He's blue like a Smurf. I've never seen this in my life. I've never experienced this. I wasn't. Is he done? Is he dead? I or thought is he... he was. Okay. Yeah, I thought he was. I'm like, uh, I, I didn't, couldn't even dial 911, right? So I called 911. I made the big mistake on when I called 911. I said my, room, I think my room, roommate overdosed. Right. Delray Beach is like the rehab capital of the world. They get more re, uh, overdose calls. They have no sympathy for overdose. Right. I mean, these, I, I mean, I'm running out to the parking lot to meet these guys because so it's like a windy way in. They're just schwaffing. <laughs> right. Dude, another day on the job. I'm like, there's a guy dying in my apartment. Right. Like, you know, they they go in there, lips are purple, face is blue. They grab him by the ankles. They just drag him out in the living room. And uh, they hit him with Narcan a couple of times, and his eyes opened up. As they got him on the stretcher, his well, eyes they're opened They're professionals. Yeah. Like, they don't yeah. do it. Like, fine. Like, they're it's... like, no, we still got 15 seconds. Yeah. Uh, he's, 12 he's, seconds. Yeah. 11 seconds. He's still got some brain function got... there. Thank God they saved him. That's this crazy. This is the CIA's five-second mask developed during the Cold War. The concept behind the mask was to provide agents with a mask that could completely transform their appearance in a matter of seconds. Unlike traditional Hollywood prosthetics, which could take hours to apply, the five-second mask was custom-molded to fit the wearer's face precisely. This allowed agents to change their ethnicity, Ooh. gender, and age with ease, without the need for adjustments or a mirror. Made from durable materials like full-face latex and synthetic hair, these masks were designed to be both realistic and functional. Agents could apply them while moving through public spaces, 
quickly slipping into alleys or buildings to change their appearance as needed. What? The masks were designed for practical use under various conditions, folding down compactly for concealment in pockets or under clothing. The five-second mask exemplified the CIA's innovation in espionage, enhancing agent safety and operational flexibility, while posing challenges to surveillance and detection technologies. Imagine what they have now, and imagine what they are using it for. Matrix is the greatest movie of all time. I don't care what anybody says. There's a scene in the Matrix where Neo goes to see the Oracle, and she tells him that he's not the one. And I always wondered, why did she tell him that? Find out watching the movie that he, of course, is the one. So why would she tell him that he isn't? She goes, okay, let me stand up. And she starts making a mockery of this whole thing. She goes, open your mouth, say ah. And, you know, she's like checking his face, she's checking his eyes. She's like baking a cake she, or she's something, She's like right? making cookies, yeah, right? Yeah. And then she tells him that he's not the one. He's like, what? I, I really thought that I was. She tells him, you know, Neo, Morpheus believes in you. He believes in you so blindly that not you, not even me, could convince him otherwise that you're not. He believes it so much, in fact, that he is going to risk his life to save yours. In one hand, you'll have Morpheus's life, and in the other hand, you'll have your own. One of you is going to die. Which one is entirely up to you? I went, oh my God, it's a choice. You are the one, and you're also not. It's up to you. Because that situation that he's in later in the movie, that's when he becomes the one. He risked his life to save Morpheus. And she says this to him, and it kind of wraps up this scene brilliantly in like a very deep philosophical sense. And she goes, listen, don't worry about it. As soon as you walk out that door, you're going to start to feel better. I promise. You're going to remember, you don't believe in any of this fate crap. You're in control of your own life. Remember? Fate is real. You do have a destiny. But that doesn't mean that you can just wait around for it to happen. You have to choose mm -hmm. to do it. I I think it's hilarious that as a program, before she does anything, the Oracle asks Neo if he'll accept cookies. Video shows police rescuing a woman who was wow. kidnapped by a serial killer in South Carolina. Look at that. Just a girl. Just a girl. Just a girl. How are you, honey? This is, this, cutters. this is our best friend. He's a paramedic. So oh my goodness. Okay, we're going to get you out of there, okay? Just hang those woman. Anybody got a, I need a handcuff key. The Spartanburg County Sheriff Ugh. said 30-year-old Kayla Brown was found chained up like a dog in a storage container in November. She told them she was in there for two months. Oh. Police came to her rescue after hearing screams from inside the container, which was on the property of 45-year-old Todd Kolhep, a local real estate agent. Oh my. Video taken by police during the rescue shows the woman inside the container with a chain around her neck. As she was being freed, she told police of the horrors she had seen. Todd Kohep shot Charlie Carver three times in the chest, wrapped him in a blue tarp, put him in the bucket of the tractor, locked me down here and I never seen him again. Oh my god, that's crazy. So glad she was found and freed. I can't imagine what she has endured. You see what China did? China just passed the law because, you know, the Chinese, they're pretty much the world superpower. They're waiting for America to jump. They're going to bite them, right? They are so focused and obsessed with global conquest that they have shut down Ooh. video gaming to three hours a week. Damn. In China, they better not catch your child. This is the government telling the, fam the family and the parents three hours. You know why? Because we're trying to take over the planet Earth. We ain't got time for TikTok. And by the way, they have no social media in China. They have their own social media. So you must use the state-sponsored social media. In order for me to check Twitter or get on YouTube or my Instagram, I had to get a VPN code and break through to get through. So there's no social media in China. Only three hours of video games a week. You try to do that in black America, there'd be a civil war. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It doesn't matter what China do, Russia, even the United States, and etc. We all here on borrowed time. We all going to live this world regardless. And that's real. Has the message arrived? I'm your brother John, the nationalist. The Russians have a spy whale. I can't make this up. This happened right now. In Norwegian waters. A whale had surfaced and unfortunately had passed, and it turns out it was a whale the Russians used to spy on other areas. Seriously, this right here was 
Havel Dimer, and he is a beluga whale that has been going around since at least 2019 with certain equipment no. on his body. When he was found in 2019, at least according to this Norwegian publication, he was found wearing ammunition, a small camera mount, and then a buckle with the inscription, Equipment St. Petersburg. This is what that looked like. You could see the harness going this way and another harness going that way. Here's the deal here though. It's no secret that Russia does try to use different kinds of marine life as spies or potentially to have some kind of tracking device, etc. Because they've done it with dolphins. So it would make sense they would do it with whales. All that being said, this one is clearly out of commission and hopefully people are able to take the technology that Russia put on it and study it to see what Russia is doing with this stuff. Well, the U.S. had famously used dolphins too back in the 60s and 70s. There's a great movie called The Day of the Dolphin. It was a thriller about spy and killer dolphin based on the program. <laughs> Lewis Matthews is a convicted child molester well, he's and now is headed to prison. I'll stipulate that he was on probation at the time that this alleged offense occurred. Two years ago, Matthews sexually battered his girlfriend's 10-year-old daughter oh while living with the family. One night, the victim's mother walked in and caught Matthews with her daughter. Investigators say Matthews panicked and took the victim without her mother's permission to a convenience store. They say he bought bleach and poured the bleach on the victim to destroy any DNA evidence. But it didn't work. Matthews was convicted earlier this month and is now staring at a possible life sentence. At a sentencing Monday, prosecutors asked for just that. And we're asking for life on Prosecutors also reminding the judge Matthews inflicted a lifetime of trauma to an innocent child and her family. Is there anything you wish to say? No, ma'am. I thank you for your time and everything. The defendant's mother didn't even show up for the hearing. On his way out, Matthews shook his attorney's hand and chuckled. That's hard to believe considering the judge had just handed him a life sentence. Matthews was also on probation for another crime when he committed the child abuse. This poor baby, she will forever suffer from this. I hope everyone knows about him in the pen. I remember one time I hired a plumber and he came over to my house and he walks in the house and he takes like 10, 15 minutes. All of a sudden he solves this crazy problem. And then I get a bill for like $5,000. And at first I'm like, why is this $5,000? He goes, well, you're not paying for the part I use to fix the problem. You're paying for the experience I have to find out where that problem was. Because I can tell you, nobody else in this city would have knew how to do that. The size of the problem is how you should charge. You should never charge for your time. You should charge for the solution to the size of the problem that the customer has. That's how you build a business. If you cannot fix it yourself, you're paying for the convenience of someone else who learned to fix it. When Donald Trump said during the debate, that Joe Biden is taking black jobs and giving them to migrants, he was correct. Although he didn't say it because he cared about us, but he's right. When people say, what do you mean by black jobs? Get out your bougie feelings and deal with the reality. One third of black men have a felony. So there's a lot of jobs they will never qualify for. They are mostly what? Essential workers, warehouse, trucking, security. And a lot of those jobs are going to who? The migrants. They're not the enemy. The problem is black people don't get as much opportunity. So that's what he meant by black jobs. We got to stop being so sensitive and look at the reality of it. The other day we're talking and I'm like, so guys, I got a question for you. What should happen to daddy's money if I die? And my oldest son says, oh, it should go to me. I'll manage it. Then my youngest son said, wait a minute, how about me? He says, you're actually right. We should do 50-50. And then my youngest, my oldest daughter, eight years old, she's like, how about me? And they're like, yeah, we'll take care of you, but I want my own money. So then I'm like, okay, what if one of you guys becomes a drug addict? What do you mean? What if one of you guys just is a bad sibling and all you want to do is party, do drugs, and be irresponsible? That person shouldn't get anything. Okay, good. You guys agree? I agree. Mm. What if somebody does that? What if somebody marries somebody that only marries you for the money and because they want to get the money from the family and they're marrying the family because they want your money, your part of the state? No, we're not going to do that. They're going to have to be with me because they love me. I said, okay, so that's good. We just wrote out a living trust right there. I love when parents talk to their kids about money. You know, how to spend wisely, eat fast, earn, etc. Paralyzed victims of a baby-faced gangster who shot a little girl in the neck have breathed a sigh of relief after the 16-year-old from Oklahoma was jailed for 50 years. 
Noah Ooh. Ney was sentenced as an adult for the 2022 shooting after the court was told he knows the difference between right and wrong but has no amenability to treatment. The 4 feet 9 inches gunman was jailed on Monday, two months after he mounted a daring escape from a Tulsa juvenile detention center where he had assaulted staff, flooded his cell and smeared feces on the walls. Ooh. I have treatment records in a packet thicker than a dictionary showing treatment attempts that he rejected by escaping or assaulting staff that were there to help him, said Assistant Tulsa County District Attorney Morgan Metters. Nay already had a criminal record stretching back to his middle school years when he shot the five-year-old girl in April last year what? in what the court heard was an initiation into the town's Hoover Crips gang. She was playing inside her home in North Rockford Avenue when he drove by in a stolen car and fired a gun at the house, hitting her in the neck and shoulder. There were multiple people in the line of fire during the drive-by shooting, Metters told Tulsa District Court. The five-year-old was transported to hospital by EMSA because of the severity of her injuries and a difference of an inch or two in the penetrating gunshot wounds to the child could have resulted in her death. Nay was awaiting sentence for the shooting when he and another inmate scaled the fence of the Tulsa County Juvenile Justice center and went on the run i say lock him up for life he's doing this at his age and it's only going to get worse and uh, do you have kids jeff mm -hmm. and how old are your kids my youngest is 18 and he's <laughs> ah he just graduated from school from high school well my other kids are all older from my first marriage yeah and this is your second marriage and you've been married 18 years so take me step by step, Jeff, through the events of today. You went online, you went to a site, then what happened? I was stupid and I texted. And I knew I knew it was wrong to pull in. And I, I really don't know how to explain it. I'm just, I'm frustrated and I'm, I'm just, you know, I was just looking for some company more than anything else. Right. Just somebody that will pay attention that, you know, no designs really for, I mean, you know, you heard her, she held off, you know, that the other stuff is just a more of a fantasy thing. My wife's not really much into anything. And I just, you know. What was his job? Am I missing it? For almost nine months now, many of these passengers have been cruising around the world, visiting all seven continents. With only about 10 days left, the serenade of the seas docked in St. John's Harbor. And I'm sorry, but coming in here was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is their first Canadian experience, and cruisers commented on the beautiful sail through the Narrows on Thursday morning. But as for the rest of the world, they've certainly seen it all. By the end of their trip, in less than two weeks' time, they will have visited more than 150 destinations wow. in 65 countries and 11 great wonders of the world gone through 31 time zones and crossed the equator six times but officially eight because the captain did a donut one time most passengers say it's been difficult to pick a highlight of the trip so far mm. seeing it all from australia's great barrier reef the great wall of china and another one of the most breathtaking sights in the world the taj mahal Antarctica was unbelievable. Seeing a penguin float by on an iceberg was so much fun. Um, the Taj Mahal was incredible, you know, beautiful. Um, it's, but really, the moment you're in is the moment you want to have be the best, and it always is. Antarctica was breathtaking. Ushuaia down the tip of South America. Bali. Bali, For this of Utah course. man who has lots of trip highlights, he also says Newfoundland and Labrador is a stop that he was quite looking forward to. That's because it's his first time back since he lived on the province's west coast back in the 70s. And I am thrilled to be back in Newfoundland. I lived in Corner Brook and Stephenville back in 1975-76. So, so is this your first time back since the yes, 70s? And I love Newfoundland. With a starting price of $53,000 per passenger, running up to more than $100,000, passengers say it's worth every penny. Everyone we spoke with today says the friends they've met over the past number of months now feel like family members. But we had to know, was it a difficult decision to pack up and leave your home for nine months? Yeah, it was huge, and there was so much work to get ready for it, you know, medications, um, 
what do you pack? But this hit all the spots that we wanted to visit at some point in our life. And there's health span and there's lifespan. And while we're healthy and young enough, we decided let's do it. Well, unfortunately, both of our dads passed away when we were very young. So we decided let's go travel now and make the most of what we have. So yeah. no did, regrets. It ended up being a brief discussion and a lot of panic for about a year <laughs> and a half until we got on board. And then after that, we didn't look back. Well, the city of St. John's was supposed to be the only Canadian stop for this world cruise ship. However, passengers today told us that they'll be heading on to Nova Scotia now due to an itinerary change. Beth Penny, NTV News. There's honestly not a bad price, even at $10,000 a month, to see you know, what they seem to have meals room and board. Totally worth it. What do you think? Getting weird. Part infinity. That was your warning. If you continue, remember, I'm not picking you up for therapy. It's on you. <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Do y'all even know the amount of these videos I've seen that we have seen at this point? Because I'm always going to bring you along on this shitty journey. <laughs> now, you've done this before, sir. This isn't, this isn't new. And you pushed it out. There's no way it's shot out like a cannon on its own. You pushed it out. <sighs> Listen. I also have had to do do with the utmost urgency. Oh, I believe we all have. You did that? You know what I'm talking about? Like when you're almost at the house That's and your colon connects to the Wi-Fi <laughs> on your toilet seat. Oh, man. Like that. It's bad. I get it. But never, and I repeat, never, have I ever thought to just take my pants down and push one out. <laughs> That's crazy. How does one get to this level of not giving I don't even know if I want to be on that level. That's a crazy level. Hey, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You cannot control it. We spent the past year following a man who we're gonna call Long Long and a handful of other people in Myanmar were selling their organs online just to feed their families. Oh my all God. Around. Hello, all It all started when I found a Burmese language group where some people were offering to sell their organs. Now, a lot of these posts look very similar. They said, I'm doing this for financial reasons. A lot of them also gave their phone numbers. So our Burmese producer, Sue and I, we spent weeks reaching out to dozens and dozens of people. Now, contacting people in Myanmar is not easy. There's very limited internet access, and a lot of times people are just too scared to speak to media because of the military government that they live under. But eventually, we found Mong Mong, who was willing to let us document his story. Long Mong had just sold his kidney for about $3,000 to Chinese Burmese businessmen and at the time was in New Delhi, India, waiting for the transplant surgery. Oh my God. Our team in New Delhi went and met him before the surgery and then again a week later when he was in the recovery ward. It's so rare to get this kind of access oh my God. and to follow along for something oh, like this. Man. This was a life-changing moment for Mong Mong. And up until the last moment, he couldn't quite believe that this is what he had had to resort to. The situation in post coup Myanmar is dire, but without access to the country, it's really difficult to explain just how bad it is. You know, we can be better than this. This man built a $160 million legacy and became a hip-hop legend. Meet the notorious big-born Christopher Wallace in 1972 in New York. Biggie grew up in the rough neighborhood. Raised by his single mother, he excelled academically, but turned to drug dealing at the age of 12 to make ends meet. Despite his early life struggles, his talent for rapping was undeniable. Biggie's career took off in the early 90s when he released his debut album, Ready to Die, in 1994. That became a massive success, peaking at number 13 on the Billboard 
Billboard 200 and eventually going quadruple platinum. Biggie's second album, Life After Death, was released just 16 days after his tragic death in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles in 1997. Despite his untimely death at the age of 24, Biggie's estate has grown significantly. Managed by his mother and his widow, his estate is now worth approximately $160 million. How is he richer than Tupac Shakur? Everybody in this world is replaceable, honey. That's not you true. Know? You could replace, uh, uh, you could replace dad? Of course! Tomorrow, <laughs> if I want to. Idiot. Idiot. <laughs> Everybody is replaceable, honey. Listen to me. One nail, take another out. Give yourself time. Take it for the kids, honey. Oh Give your shut up. Give yourself time. You know, take your time. You know, you want to cry, you can cry. You want to laugh, you laugh. Don't warn, oh, my life is over. Uh -uh. Somebody else is going to come and it's going to be better. Don't take a photocopy of the same person. No. You're going to go completely out of it. You're going to be happy, honey. Good luck to you. Open your eyes. You need my advice 24-7. I'm here, honey. I love you and I wish you the best. Honestly, from, the, from my heart. Don't cry too much. Let the motherfuckers there. If they let them, let them cry. Let them <laughs> I like cry. it. Yeah. Don't cry. Yeah. You know what? I cannot focus on what he's saying with that photo in the background. All right, folks. Thank you for staying till the end. Be kind to each other. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And don't forget to like or dislike so I can make a better content. There's a free gift below. And if you want to buy me coffee or support me through Patreon, the links are in the description below. Have a prosperous day and God bless.